Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the uh, Savage Nation. I began this show with a prayer, and the prayer was, May the God I believe in help me tell the truth today. And the whole truth and nothing but the truth is what I'm going to give you. As you well know, yesterday, Donald Trump was on this program for the sixth time. I played for you an interview with Donald Trump from 2011. That means I have interviewed Donald Trump for five years, longer than anyone that I know of in radio. I have supported Donald Trump as soon as I knew what his positions were on national security and the military. And in fact, yesterday, I asked him if he would appoint a combat veteran to be the defense secretary, leaving aside the long line of, shall I say, contractors or lobbyists who've been running defense ever since the Vietnam War destroying the military. And he said he would. He would find the next Patton or the next MacArthur. That, to me, was the biggest take-home message. But there was another subtext to yesterday's interview, and I will take some credit for the fact that I spoke with Donald Trump, telling him he did not need Megyn Kelly, he did not need Fox News, and I would say within 30 minutes of that, he said he would dump the debate. Now, whether he does or not, I don't know. He could change his mind. He's a free agent. But as of now, he said he's not going to go before that hag, Megyn Kelly. The fact is, is that Megyn Kelly has shown who she really is yesterday. She actually interviewed one of the worst people in American history, Michael Moore. She would interview one of the most phenomenally anti-American, anti-family, anti-God, and certainly anti-conservative beings in the world. And he saluted her for scaring Trump. So you join all those who are attacking Trump. You're now on the side of Hollywood and Michael Moore. That's all I can say to you. There was also a press conference later in the day by Donald Trump, and some fool from NBC tried to confront Trump, Trump on abortion. What was sickening about it is that he showed how tough he was, this reporter, this little man, Peter Alexander, and he went on and on. I recognize the, the voice from New York. I know the type. It's an Upper East Side snotty kid. Parents gave him everything his whole life. He thinks he's smarter than everyone on the earth. He thought he would take down Trump. And all I could think of after listening to it was, how come he's not so tough with Obama? How come he's not so tough with Hillary? How come they let Obama and Hillary skate with every one of their crimes against this nation and against the world? But when it comes to Donald Trump, they suddenly find their manhood. Isn't that interesting? But nevertheless, I want to begin this show with something that I think is significant, uh, which is the interchange from yesterday. Maybe I'll hold that for a minute. I'm going to play the interchange which runs 60 seconds from yesterday, where I suggested that Donald Trump not go to the Fox debate. But first, I want to do something else, and that is this. I want to instead read you some of the responses thus far that have come up about that interview and what's going on between uh, Trump and, and Fox. Here's one. Yvonne Klein wrote, I heard your interview with Trump yesterday. Masterful. I'm so proud of you and of the Donald for this action. Megyn Kelly actually interviewed Michael Moore last night and puffed herself up like Aesop's frog when he kissed her over scaring Trump. We know who the losers are here. Fox and all their got masters. I will be watching CNN. I hope you will as well. That's one comment. There's a lot of them. We've had, I don't know, 79,000 people responded to that particular post. Obviously, I, I can only pick a few of them. Megyn Kelly kneecapped Trump in the first debate. Why should Donald Trump stand on a debate stage for two hours and be attacked by an unhinged second-rate bimbo? And by the way, her hairdo. Well, what's that hairdo about? Another one, of course, on the other side says he's ducking Ted Cruz. Can't get why you support him over Ted Cruz. And on and on. I get that. And says, why is it that no one is pointing out the fact that Rand Paul, again, Rand Paul, didn't attend the last debate because he didn't make it to the big stage. And Fox has bowed down to him for this debate and was putting eight. Well, you see what I'm saying? You can have people saying he's a coward. He's a hero. He's a coward. He's a hero. He's a coward. He's a hero. Then they say, shouldn't Trump be able to overcome his obstacles if he wants to be POTUS? No, the answer is no, he shouldn't. Megyn Kelly is not 
uh, the president of China. That's not the way it works. She has all the advantages. Let me explain how the media works in case you don't know it. They control the microphones. They control the lights. They control the brakes. Roger Ailes sits back there in the control room from his mansion somewhere and tells the little men in the control room who to go to with the camera, when to go with the camera, when to cut away from the camera, when to focus on Megan's smile, when to focus on Trump's sweating. No, it's not the same thing as taking on a world leader on a fair stage. He would decimate world leaders on a fair stage. He cannot win in a televised debate. Not when that toad, Roger Ailes, sits in his mansion pulling the switches. A man who goes back to the Nixon era. Make no mistake about it. This is Nixonian what is being done to Donald Trump in the worst sense of the Nixonian era. And it is being done by Fox News. You talk about Aesop's fables? Well, there you just had Aesop's fables. So you're all over the, the, the subject here on both sides. I get it. The shame of it is, is that we're attacking each other. We're letting the cruise bots attack Donald Trump. When Trump may win, what are they going to do then? Say suddenly we support him? Or if Cruz wins, he will be damaged goods from this battle. And who gets away with it? None other than the criminal on the other side of the aisle. The criminal and the commie. That's who gets away with it. This is the classic mistake of the Republicans who are far too open as far as I am concerned. The Democrats operate their machinery the same way the ex-Soviet Union Politburo operated the Communist Party uh, in their nations. And that is as a closed shop. Hillary Clinton learned very well at the hands of her masters, going all the way back to Saul Alinsky, who she studied back in college. They run it like a communist party. Closed shop, no debates. And the Stooges give them the forum that they need. You call that a debate the other night? Between O'Malley, Hillary, and the commie from New York's delis? You have NBC, National Bolshevik Communications. You have ABC, Always Bolshevik Communications. You have CBS, Communist BS. You have CNN, Crescent News Networks. You have Fox, falsely owned ex-corporation. And you expect them to be fair to an outsider like Donald Trump? Oh, yes, he's a billionaire. Yeah, he's a billionaire, so hold that against him. Hold that against him. There are many, many big stories. This is only one of them, by the way. You do know that American dissidents were attacked and killed in Oregon yesterday. Did you know that? Now, I posted this on my website, michaelsavage.com, and I said, dissidents killed, not in Iran, but in Oregon. Your FBI or Oregon State Police assassinated American protesters. Now, what would have happened if a group of black protesters had done a sit-in on a ranch or a federal property for a number of days, and your FBI under Obama executed the communications director of the black organization, shot him in cold blood, oh, I would say you'd hear an outlight, outcry today, wouldn't you? You know, my friends, white lives do matter. Another American town, another shooting of an innocent American citizen, yet this morning there was silence from the anti-gun nuts. No protests in the streets screaming, hands up, don't shoot. No turning over of police cars. No cries of the fake reverends, no justice, no peace. You see, the media doesn't care about this incident. It doesn't rise to the level of outrage for the community organizer in the White House. Because you see, the color of the person's skin is not the right color to care about. According to the reports, everyone obeyed orders in this standoff after a traffic stop. Mr. Finnicum, who was executed by the federal government, was said to have put his hands out of the window, according to witnesses. The fascist police said he didn't obey, and they shot him dead. The silence is deafening. As Americans, we believe all lives do matter. We are now facing a fascist federal government that is infringing upon more parts of our lives than ever before. But these poor, well, I should say poor American dissidents in Oregon have no one standing up for them. Not one word from the community organizer. Nothing from the attorney general. Nothing from the fake reverends. Nothing from the head of the Clinton crime family. Nothing from the street commie, Bernie Sanders. He says he's for the downtrodden. They're all silent. But this time there's a dead American. But the fact is he's white. And the America that we believe in is not a, an America where there is equal justice under the law. 
This man who was shot is all of us, not because he's white, but because he believed in something greater than himself. He believed in freedom, liberty, and love of country, and he was killed for it by the FBI or the Oregon State Police. If we lived in a fair country, there would be an outcry across America for this execution by the federal government or the Oregon State Police. There'd be an investigation of who shot that gun and who killed that innocent man who was basically threatening no one. In fact, there would be an investigation in the United States Congress over this incident. In fact, there'd be a call for the United Nations to intervene and investigate this assassination of a political dissident in the United States of America. We kept hearing in the age of uh, Iran when it was still a bad place, now it's a good place because John Kerry told us it's a good place, that there was an Iranian dissident movement and that the fascist Iranian government was suppressing the Iranian dissident movement. Well, here we have American dissidents in Oregon. and One of them was executed by the federal government. This is a worldwide case. Do you understand that? I'm glad I got your attention. I'm glad I got your attention on what's going on in Obama's fascist dictatorship in the United States of America. But we'll go back to the Trump deal because that's all you want to talk about. We'll also talk about Zika, the very deadly virus, has been confirmed in Los Angeles amongst a little girl who traveled to El Salvador. Really? No kidding. That's where she got it from and brought it back? And if you think you're immune because you're a good progressive, let me tell you something I've been saying for 21 years. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Microbes do not discriminate. Viruses do not discriminate. They don't care if you're a good communist. They don't care if you're a good liberal. They don't care if you're a good progressive. They'll cross right across your skin. They'll cross right into your bloodstream. So pay very close attention to what I, Michael Savage, have to, have to say to you. I've been saying it for 21 years. Diseases are coming across our borders because of your collapsed federal government, just as I've been telling you for many years. And the fact of the matter is, it's going to get much worse, much, much worse. The Zika virus is going to be an epidemic in this country, as sure as I'm standing here, because of Obama, because of the fake CDC, because of the Border Patrol being told to stand down. This disease will spread like the plague in this country, as sure as I'm standing here. There is an answer, of course. And the answer is quarantine all people traveling to and from these sources of disease. That would be all the nations where the disease is now prevalent. That is epidemiology 101. But since there are no longer any scientists or doctors in charge of the CDC, just little petty puppets, little petty politicians in nice suits, they won't tell you that the obvious is to quarantine all travelers coming in and out of Zika infected nations so it leaves us hanging in the wind doesn't it and that's why i don't know how the timing worked out my book diseases without borders i don't know how the timing worked out it did work out it's up on michaelsavage.com you can order it from i don't know a couple of sites amazon it's only an ebook it's like 299 i wrote it during this year i wrote it because i figured the flu season would be coming and certain diseases, people wanted to know all of the things I've told them about over the years on how to stimulate their immunity with vitamins, with minerals, with herbs, and other things. And I put it together in a small, simple format. Little did I know that diseases without borders would be available virtually at the same time that this horrendous, horrendous affliction is entering our nation because of the collapse of our government. We'll talk about that as well as White Lives Matter. We'll talk about Donald Trump. We'll talk about all the other topics of the day right here on The Savage Nation. Well, many of you turn to my show to go behind the headlines and dig into what's really going on. You don't know beyond Megyn Kelly. She's the face of what, what Roger Ailes, the devil, had decided to do. Did you know the following? I'll bet you didn't hear it anywhere else. Did you know that this Fox and Google GOB debate that Trump withdrew from, do you know that they invited a YouTube Muslim advocate to take over the debate to slime Donald Trump? Did you know that? They took a disgusting Muslim fanatic, a Muslim you 